Hi friends. So around a week or so back, around 10 days back, Supreme Court has uh, given an important judgment regarding the uh, affidavit, um, regarding the um, people, candidates who got criminal cases pending against them and who are contesting elections. So it is a long checkered history. So somewhere around 1999, Association of Democratic Reforms, ADR, an NGO which have been in the forefront for um, decriminalization of politics in India, has filed a case in Supreme Court and uh, the judgment came in 2004. And for the first time, uh, Supreme Court acknowledged that this is a major problem and uh, then uh, directed the uh, election commission that all the candidates who are contesting elections have to file affidavits in the affidavits which is um, has to be done before the returning officer um, they have to give the information about any criminal course cases pending against them which have been taken license by the court and um, apart from that they also have to furnish details about their uh, educational qualification um, about the assets and liabilities of themselves, their spouse and their uh, dependents. Uh, so all this Supreme Court has said um, as electoral reforms um, under Article 19.1a of the Constitution under which the Supreme Court said uh, it's a fundamental right of the people um, who are going to elect people to represent them, MPs or MLAs. So under this broader category of right to know, Supreme Court said um, we should know the information, financial information about the candidates, about the criminal cases, about educational qualifications, etc. So, but uh, in fact, this has not brought in any desired results. As uh, we know, uh, in 2000, every year, in fact, in spite, of, in spite of this judgment, every single election, Lok Sabha election, we see more and more people uh, having criminal antecedents are elected as MPs and MLAs. In 2004, for example, uh, um, the Lok Sabha election, the number of MPs elected with the criminal cases pending against them was 24%. Then it became 30% in 2009 elections. And 2014 elections around 34%. And 2019 election 42 or 43%. All data are given by Association of Democratic Reforms based on the affidavits filed by the candidates. And uh, what happened was, you know, political the, the political parties and the candidates find ways to cheat the um, system. And uh, many times, um, because filing a false affidavit is a criminal activity under Section 191 of IPC. So instead of uh, in the, instead of giving details, they just started making the not filling up the column also. So uh, that also happened. Um, so in 2013, Supreme Court said that um, if a candidate has not filled any column, you cannot fill leave any column blank now. So if you know case is pending against you, you should say that it is nil or uh, any not applicable. Um, and you cannot leave any column blank. If any column is left blank, the returning officer can reject that nomination. It is incomplete nomination and he has the powers to reject the nomination. So it, they have to now fill it up. Uh, and then in 2018, uh, another PAL was filed in the Supreme Court. And because, because this number of uh, candidates with criminal cases pending against them has been always on the increase. In fact, even in the uh, recently concluded Delhi Assembly elections, more than 100 candidates who contested elections had criminal cases pending against them. And uh, more than 25 uh, people have cases, uh, uh, heinous cases also pending against them. And at least around uh, more than 40 candidates who have been finally elected out of 70 have got criminal cases pending against them. So the system is being manipulated by political parties and the candidates and who got elected also. So therefore, uh, 2018 Supreme Court said that uh, if any candidate um, who is filing uh, obviously has criminal antecedents, then, then the political party which has nominated that person uh, must give uh, advertisements in newspapers uh, stating the reason say, that uh, the person whom they, they are they given the uh, you know, uh, 
um, seat uh, to contest the elections. They must say that he has a criminal, he or she has a criminal case suspending, and uh, the reasons why, the, in spite of that, the party has given that person uh, the right to contest the elections. So, but uh, but it was not really followed in the sense that you know there are many small newspapers you know with no circulation at all which exists uh, for this kind of purposes. So political parties uh, circumvented this judgment also. So a contempt of court was filed in Supreme Court in 2019, and for that Supreme Court has come up with a judgment in February 2020, and the uh, Supreme Court said uh, yes, it is definitely they are uh, trying to circumvent the whole thing and made this condition now more stringent. Now this information has to be published by the political party uh, within 24 hours in one national newspaper which is in English and one uh, vernacular local uh, newspaper and also in their website and also in the social media also. And uh, they have to give the reasons uh, stating uh, in spite of the criminal antecedents and but not about the winnability that is not a criteria uh, what are the reasons the merits of the achievements of the person which warranted the political party to give uh, the permission to contest on its symbol though knowing well that the person is facing criminal charges which has been already taken cognizance by a court so supreme court said uh, this is mandatory and uh, within 72 hours of giving the seat, they should give a file an action report also with the election commission attaching all the uh, advertisements they are given and the social media also they should give. So if anybody, uh, if, if they are not filed it, then election commission can forward a case to Supreme Court saying that this is a contempt of court. right? So now question marks uh, whether uh, this will bring the desired results or whether this is a step in the right direction. A lot of question marks are there. So in fact another case uh, last week Supreme Court has uh, reserved the final judgment on uh, one another case. Mr. Fadnavis, Devendra Fadnavis was the CM of uh, Maharashtra. Uh, in 2014, when he filed an affidavit, later he became the CM after winning the elections uh, from one constituency in Nagpur. Uh, he did not uh, give information about two cases which are pending against him. One filed in 1996, another filed in 1998. One on forgery, another on some cheating, election cheating or something like that. Two cases which have been pending for a long time. He has not given the information. And one lawyer has um, said this is violating Supreme Court judgment, but no action has been taken uh, by the, the local courts. Uh, but he already has become CM and uh, he has no action. Uh, no, the, the courts rejected this. Then he went to Bombay High Court, which has also rejected it. But in October 2019, Supreme Court said um, the prima facie there seems to be a violation and a uh, case should be filed against Mr. Devendra Fadnavis, why he has not uh, given that information. So Mr. Fadnavis has asked for a review of the case um, and again went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court has uh, now heard all the arguments for the, that to allow the review and uh, now reserved the judgment. I hope uh, Supreme Court takes a proper view of the case and definitely people who are filing false affidavits should be taken. But at present, what is the punishment for people who file false affidavits? Okay, let me first talk about the recent Supreme Court judgment, then I come to the false affidavit part of it. Uh, Supreme Court, um, yes, right to know is a fundamental right of the people. We should know about the candidates. Um, but, uh, you know, when... Uh, uh, the ruling party in power can file false cases also against political opponents. This is uh, very, very much a reality in today's India. So that was also has to be taken into account. So probably we need to may change the you know uh, law. Uh, if anybody is facing a, um, you know uh, any case which is punishable above two years under RP IPC, probably that is um, that needs to be published. So, for example, uh, if I am protesting, or anyone is protesting, and, uh, and peacefully also, the police can file fake cases, and uh, you know, then uh, uh, you, there will be a, the stigma atta is getting attached to you. So, there has to be a clear distinction between such cases of political nature, 
and uh, real criminal cases, particularly heinous cases which warrant punishment of above seven years, like rape or murder or kidnapping, etc. We are we need to distinguish both. So we need to remove the criminals from the system, but at the same time should not harass the genuine people who are fighting against uh, uh, malpractices in the system. Uh, because false cases can be put by the police anytime and uh, courts are also pretty compliant and uh, they can easily take cognizance of the case also. Uh, so we need to modify the case. Second, I think we are putting this judgment unnecessary uh, burden on the political parties. So what about in the independent candidates? If their criminal cases are pending against them, then uh, are they required to publish in the newspapers or stuff like that? It is not clear. And when, in, when in, uh, you, the, there has to be a you know sense of you know, fair play and natural law. So if that is not needed for an independent candidate or an uh, unrecognized political party, why it is needed for a candidate from a recognized political party? So why put the burden on the political parties? So therefore, it should be burden should be shifted to election commission. Election commission should publicize in its uh, uh, website. If the election commission wants the you know um, time frame for withdrawal of the nomination is over, still the people with the criminal cases pending against some are contesting elections can give a full page advertisement in the newspaper. And Supreme Court said that winnability of the candidate should not be a criteria while when the when the political parties give justification why they were appointed is going against, in my opinion, the gravy grain of democracy. Democracy is all about winning elections, whether you like it or not. There are many negative things about democracy, but there are many positive things. Therefore, we are sticking up with democracy. Aristotle once famously said that uh, democracy is the um, worst possible system, what we know. But unfortunately, we are not yet come up with a better system than democracy. So, uh, it is, I think the burden should be on the election commission and uh, I think already very good work has been done by agencies like ADR to publicize all this and bringing it into the awareness of the people. Then now coming to filing the false affidavit, uh, section 125A of the Representation of People's Act uh, now gives the punishment for filing false affidavit that is uh, six months uh, jail sentence. But uh, the 244th Law Commission report uh, very clearly says that this is not enough. Uh, on one side, ADR says that if uh, anybody, uh, because you know, uh, an elected MP or MLA has been, can be disqualified um, by if uh, later uh, the courts give a judgment to that person that he is guilty and is punished for more than two years jail sentence has been given, then the MLA, I mean, MLA post or he can be, he can be removed from the post. Uh, by the election commission um, on the orders of president or governor. So this uh, needs to be changed. So the ADR says that um, anybody who, who is facing a criminal change, uh, a case uh, in which the um, minimum punishment is above two years should not be even allowed to contest. But I think that is against the uh, jurisprudence principle, criminal jurisprudence principle followed in Indian law, which, uh, which assumes, presumes that the accused is innocent till proved otherwise by a a proper court. So we should not dilute that but at the same, there are two separate things. The, the basis of jurisprudence principles and natural law. Every person has a right to represent himself in the court and prove that he is innocent. Beyond reasonable doubt the prosecution has to prove that he has he is, uh, he is uh, the accused person has committed the crime. So we should not dilute the jurisprudence principle. But at the same time, 244th uh, Law Commission has given a beautiful judgment, beautiful uh, the same. They say that um, the punishment for filing false affidavits, like in the case of Adnavis, was not uh, given the, um, the mentioned the two cases already pending against him in the election affidavit in 2014. Now the present punishment is six months jail sentence should be increased to not less than two years. So automatically, if a person is convicted under this offence for filing false affidavit, then he, even if he is elected, then he can be disqualified immediately. Secondly, this should be made as a criminal practice under the RP Act, under Section 120 of the Criminal Act, so that the person will be banned from contesting elections for a few years. So this and the one more important thing is now election commission, for example, Mr. Fadnavis filed a wrong affidavit and... Uh, 
um, he doesn't deny that he has not uh, you know whatever filed is right and um, uh, he um, there, there is no verification mechanism for example in a Lok Sabha election uh, all over India in a general election almost in all well, there are 545 constituencies and assuming that uh, 10 people contest in each constituency last uh, Lok Sabha election 2019 more than 7000 people contested so it is impossible for election commission to find out that everybody has filed the right of affidavit in a short period of time so the 2244 law commission also suggested that there must be an independent mechanism uh, to verify all the details which are given by that so this can be easily done in the era of uh, so called digital governance etc it is not that there money election commission which doesn't have uh, um, many staff and all that may not be possible but again ADR kind of organizations can be roped in to verify whether the candidates are filing the right affidavit or not. And um, the, the issue of false affidavits is a big crime which is happening in India. In fact, uh, uh, Mr. Modi during his elections in Gujarat uh, assembly has said he is unmarried. But in 2014 suddenly he stated that he is married. And there are also big question marks over the affidavits he has been filing in every election that he, is, uh, he has done uh, MA, BA political science correspondence course from Delhi University and later MA correspondence course, MA, MA correspondence or not, I am not sure, from Gujarat University, Ahmedabad University. And various RTA has been filed uh, first to the universities concerned, they have refused to give information and uh, later to election commission it has also not given information RT has been filed to PMO which has also failed everybody is passing the buck mm, what is the real educational status even though the constitution doesn't say any educational qualification for anybody elected it is under right to know people should because that's what supreme court said in 2004 and uh, the concerned people should be made accountable for that so when it is then there is no accountability and the big people uh, escape the uh, law and uh, we cannot there's a rule of law says that uh, it is, should be same any person who files a false affidavit must be punished under the present circumstances six months jail sentence 244th uh, law commission says should be increased to two years and that person should be disqualified if proved and is also should be a criminal practice and should not be allowed to contest election for the next six years there should be an independent verifiable mechanism so all this seems very very legitimate to me of course there is another issue of uh, um, Ms. Smithy Irani um, she claimed once that uh, some 2004 elections are so she is a BCom graduate now she says that um, she files that she has completed only part 1 of BCom in correspondence there is no degree called part 1 BCom either you are uh, study 10 standard or 12 standard or you have completed degree uh, you cannot say that I have one uh, uh, one particular uh, uh, exam I had to pass and after that I will get a degree and all those things you can put all that in your marriage a degree you can put BCom and above within bracket or above one dash also you can put it but it is a serious affidavit this is considered as an oath and filing of this is a wrong oath is punishable under IPC also so there is there are so many inconsistencies in the law uh, why the concerned people are not ready to provide uh, their educational qualification this is a very simple thing you can do that so i think it's high time that supreme court uh, comes down heavily on the people but at the same time not violating the natural law and uh, it's time that we we, we um, start implementing the 244th law commission report on false affidavits at the same time uh, election commission should play a more proactive role so that to weed the criminal real criminal elements from the uh, electoral system and uh, many times these criminal elements uh, employ gundas to threaten the voters they have so much of uh, uh, power mm, well, this needs to be curbed but I, I feel that as I said there is some modification needed also in the supreme court I hope supreme court will give a proper judgment in the Fadnavi's case also and uh, since even RTA is not properly implemented uh, we cannot even know the educational qualification of the most powerful politician in India um, it's high time that uh, Supreme Court steps in and uh, sets right the whole thing anyway bye take care